In this video, we will consider torque, the rotational analog of force. The symbol for torque is the Greek letter tau, which looks like a T, and it is a vector. The definition of torque is that torque is created when a force is applied to an object at some distance from an axis of, of its rotation, and its definition is the cross product of two vectors, the vector r crossed with the vector f. Now what this means is you choose some axis of rotation, let's say it's an axis right here, and you've stuck a rod in that point. There doesn't actually have to be a rod, it doesn't even have to rotate about the point, but you're considering it as if it was rotating about this point. Then from that point there is some force applied somewhere on the object. The object I've chosen here is this little kind of brown bar. Here's the force. And I've drawn the arrow how the force. The force is pulling in this direction. So there's my force F. Starting from the axis of rotation, you draw an arrow from that point of the axis of rotation out to where the point is right there. This is the purple arrow. That is the distance r. Now that vector when it's multiplied by the vector f produces another vector which is perpendicular to both of the original vectors. And this new vector is called the torque. Now if you want to read the uh, or go look at the videos on the vector module you can see how to handle this in full three dimensions. But for this course, we're only going to require two dimensions. So what we'll do is look at the fact that since it is a vector, it has to have two parts. It needs a magnitude and it needs a direction. Now, to find the magnitude, you simply take the magnitude of the first vector, f, the magnitude of the second vector, r, and the sine of the angle between them. Now what that means is, is that if we go up here, I can slide this vector r down like this. Just sliding along. I can't change its length and I can't change its angle, but you can always slide a vector. Or if you don't like that, you can consider sliding the vector f back over here. Either way, between those two is an angle. This angle it should be the same if I've drawn it carefully as that angle there. What this says is take the length of this, which is r, the length of this arrow here, which is f, and the sine of the angle. Now, that will give me the value. This is best done when things are in polar form, and you know this length, you know this force, and you know this angle. However, what is it really doing? What it's really doing is can be seen if you group, for instance, the f with the sine of theta. If you do that, then this side here would be f sine theta, the opposite side, and we usually like to call that f perpendicular. So another way to look at this is it's the length of r times how much of the force is perpendicular to that R. So if you want to make something twist, go around. It's important you apply a force, but you can't pull on it like this. You have to apply perpendicular to it. Think about a door. If you push along the door, it doesn't make it open. If you want to open the door, you push perpendicular to the door. The more the force is perpendicular, then the greater the effective twist is to make this thing go open. If you take a jar, let's say a pickle jar, and you want to get it open, you don't push on it, you twist it. You apply a force perpendicular to the rim. So it's not just enough to apply a force. The force has to have some component perpendicular to this distance r. Notice also that this is different than what we had when we dealt with work. When we dealt with work, we want to know how much of the force was along the displacement, not perpendicular. So this thing is a very different property. 
Now you also could look at the problem slightly different if you wanted. You could think of extending R out like this. And you could think of pulling the purple part and finding this part of R. This would be the R being the hypotenuse, and this would be R sine theta. And this would be how much of R is perpendicular to F. So you could write it that way if you prefer. It's the force times how much of the distance R is perpendicular to F. Now this distance R is very important. The further away from the axis of orientation you apply the force, the greater the effective twist. This R is known as the moment arm. All right. And one way to increase or make yourself have a more effective twist is to get a long bar or something so you can apply your force at a greater distance from the axis. When you do this, it's often called a cheater bar in things. So let's say you had some sort of screw here and you're trying to turn it and you get a wrench. Let me draw a little wrench. Okay, well, let me let me undo that. Let me draw the wrench where I'll have some room. So you had a wrench, and the wrench went around like this, and I want to try to twist that. This is a wrench, and I couldn't twist it when I applied a force like this to it. It wasn't enough and the problem was is that there was only so much of an R from that point where it's trying to rotate about but if I come in here and get a cheater bar and I run a big bar up like this and attach that then now when I apply my force out here my R is much, 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 much bigger. And that's equal to making me look like I'm much, much, much stronger. So it's not just the force, but it also depends on how big an R. So you can use this in order to make yourself effectively stronger as far as twisting. All right, so a couple of important things. It is a vector. It has a magnitude. It depends on a force, a distance, and most importantly, how much of those two are perpendicular to each other. Direction. The direction is given by what is called the right-hand rule. Now, what the right-hand rule means is to wrap your fingers along R. So I put my fingers this away. And then I wrap them twist them, if you would, into F. And whichever way my thumb points, that's the direction of the torque. So when I do this in this case, when I wrap from R into F, my thumb points out of the page. What that means is, is that if I had done this, this thing would attempt to make this thing twist like that. It would try to twist the bar counterclockwise. And the direction of the torque for that is out of the board. In three dimensions, it's absolutely essential that we say that, hey, if this is X and this is Y, the torque points in Z. It's K hat. But for a lot of our problems in this course, we're simply going to be dealing with two-dimensional problems, unlike maybe what an engineer or scientist would deal with, where the physicist is dealing with an object that's three-dimensional. So we can actually use this convention that we draw the direction that our fingers would go and put the plus sign. This means that this force would attempt to cause this bar to begin rotating in that direction if the bar had started 
from a stationary position. And so we'll use this in our free body diagrams to enable us to make it easier. We'll put a directional plus. Those that cause the object to want to start that away will give a plus sign, and those that make it go the other way will call negative torques. As I mentioned already, the torque depends not only on the force, but also on the axis of rotation because it depends upon R. If you change the axis that you're talking about rotating, you change R. This can then both change the magnitude and direction of the torque. And in the next video, we will do an example that shows this.